Tucker time. Tucker time. Tucker time. Get away, boat. Hey, brothers, how you going? A bit like deja vu. We were only doing this yesterday. This morning, I want to share a story that illustrates a very, very important point. And for some of you today watching this, you may be in hospital. You may be struggling with a debilitating chronic illness that you've had for years that you just can't get rid of. And that I can completely relate to. You could be in pain all the time. You could be suffering from a reoccurring problem. I've had one of my jaw, a tooth. They're doing everything they can. Pulling it out is not necessarily going to be the right option, although it's probably what's going to happen. But still, it's, it's a uh, challenge, and I'm enduring the struggle with it. Some days the infection knocks me and I've got to go into antibiotics. Other days I'm good. Yesterday I thought I'd be going to the doctor this morning. This morning I got up at 5.30, feeling really good. Pace, get in. Pace, come. Pace. Got to keep an eye on that dog anyway. I hope that you aren't having to endure too much and that your life's treating you good. Poe, get in. Excuse me while I'm doing dogs while I'm talking. Just let uh, Bigsy sort his, himself out there. Taking a big old poop. Gee, it's good having your own bit of dirt where you don't have to carry a plastic bag and pick up dog poo. Just let it dry out. The older it gets, the easier it's to pick up. Uh, talking about dog poo, not uh, something else. Come on, Bigsy, get that out of your bum. Jeez. Bigsy, come. Come on. Not finished yet, mate. I'm trying to do a vlog here. I want to close the gate so the sheep don't get out. Come on, Bigsy, come. Good boy. Good dog. Good dog. So, we're all in the same boat. Sooner or later, we've got to endure something. But the story I want to share with you this morning is uh, a story about also how our mind can make us sicker or more well without us even being aware of it. Now, this doesn't really apply to chronic illness or something. Well, maybe it can too, but on the whole, it's when you get something and you're just starting to feel bad and you'll often notice or you might not notice that if things in your life emotionally are going bad as well that that illness becomes even worse whether it's a back pain or a stomach problem so we need to wind the clock back for the story we're going to go back to 2020 my son was two years old i just come back from europe from playing music over there and it had been a hard long tour and i was pretty exhausted and i came back and I started to develop this really horrible niggle in my throat. It was a niggle that I wasn't sure whether I picked up a cold or whether it was a damage from singing or what it was. <whistles> Get on, Big Z. Good boy. Good dog. He's listening. Good boy. Good dog. Straight back to me. And it was a <coughs> one of those ones that didn't go away. And I started to, to think about it and oh, worry because I had a show coming up in New Zealand and I thought I'm not going to be able to sing. And I started to make it worse than it was inside my head I'm sure it was it was irritating me anyway the show that I had was coming up in about 10 days I think I had just over a week of it coming up I thought I'd better go and see the doctor so I went to see the doctor and he had a look at me and he goes oh you've got to strip the cockle um, something going on there by the looks of it uh, it's, it's not a uh, virus it's a, in some sort of infection we can probably probably fix that with an antibiotic and it'll be a little tear in your and your little fissure in your vocal cord. Pixie, come. Pace, come. Good boy, Pace. Pixie, come. Good boy. Po. Po, come. Pixie, get in, Pixie. Good dog. Pixie, come. Heal it up. It's a bit hard doing a video and running my dogs, but I've got to watch them. So he gave me his antibiotics. I went down to the chemist, and uh, the chemist and I got talking, and she said, oh yeah, you've, um, it's, it's a, just an infection. These will clear it up within a, within a day. You'll be feeling a whole lot better. So that was, that was great. So I took these pills home and uh, she said take uh, three, three a day with the food. Each food, breakfast, lunch and dinner. So I did that. And uh, by the end of the day, I was already starting to feel better. By the next morning, throat was, was fixed. No problems. But I finished it, finished it. Well, actually, I didn't finish it. I wasn't planning to finish it, but on day four, I got a phone call from the chemist saying, oh, uh, look, um, there's been a, a mistake. You've actually picked up another gentleman's uh, uh, a, a pill for thinning the blood because he had a, a stroke. And he's got, your, he's got your subscription, which is the antibiotics, and you've got his. So I'd been taking something which had absolutely nothing to do with my, fixing my throat, but in my mind, my throat was better. I'd already, leaving the doctor was already feeling better. 
And as you guys know, this is known as the placebo effect. Here, pace! Get in, pace! Pace! Pace, come! There's a hole down the fence down there, there's a road. There's one place I've got to block up. Good boy! He's listening. Good dog! Pace, come! So you've got placebo. Good boy! Don't run straight into me. Good boy. You've got placebo effect. And you've got the no sea blow effect. You don't hear much about that. A very good scientist that I follow, Bruce Lipton, who was one of the people that, that study the genome. In fact, one of the very first people that uh, did that stem cell therapy. A very, very good scientist, Bruce Lipton, and he talks about no sea blow. So that's the opposite to placebo. That means when you start thinking something bad, pace, get in! Pace! You make yourself sick. And we all do it without realising it. Some of us more than others. Now, I haven't had a cold or a virus or anything for a long, long time. I just don't seem to get colds. But I'm sure that if my emotional state is not good or if I'm stressed out, I, I do. The only thing I suffer from is, as far as that, is viruses, is I've got the herpes virus, uh, the type 2, I think it is, for your lips. Genital herpes is type 1, I think. Not, someone correct me, I don't know about that, but I've, I got that ever since I was a kid. And whenever I miss out on sleep or get really run down, I get a blister on my lip. And I feel like shit. It's, it's a virus that never goes away. I've also got Epstein-Barr syndrome in my system as well, which for those of you that don't know that what the medical term that is, well, that's actually, that is a medical term. The, the, the common uh, name for Epstein-Barr syndrome is glandular fever. And if you get really, really run down, it flares up. Haven't had that for years and years and years. Even when I got really, really sick with cancer, that didn't flare up, so... I'm starting to think maybe the, the system's, I don't know, got on top of it. But the no sea blow effect is something for you to be mindful of. Uh, check yourself when you do get sick and something's going on, whether there's something else. And I often ask uh, blokes or mates when they tell me they're not well, what did you have for dinner last night? And they'll tell me. So I find out it's either food or did you have a stressful event, an emotional event, or is there something that's bothering you? Now, I I get a little bit of psoriasis up here. Sometimes you might notice I get a little bit of a, a white flaky bit. That's my stress uh, thing. It tells me I'm stressed, and also my hip plays up when I'm stressed. So, the houseboat, which is up there, I had the council come down on me because a neighbour complained. And straight away, when, when they said it's going to have to come down on the phone, uh, Man, my stress went through the roof. I could feel it myself. I practiced my breathing. I did everything. But it's so hard to control your emotions when something like that's bothering you. And I was really, really like, could feel it. And guess what? The next day, read around here. That's my, that tells me I'm reading my body. I'm, I'm stressing out. Now, stress is also important because you need stress. It's not like you shouldn't have stress. I compare stress to a guitar string. Take the G string for instance on a guitar, it seems to be the one that always snaps. That's the G string on a guitar, not the other G string. If it's too loose, it just doesn't make any music. It flops around and it's, it's useless. It's just, it's just hopeless. But if it's too tight, of course it snaps. Well your stress is the same as that gu guitar string. You want to have an amount of stress that keeps you motivated to do things and take life by the balls and give it a bloody good squeeze, get out there and keep on sucking on the nipple of life and enjoying uh, the best life you can have the best life you can have but you need to have a certain amount of stress to do that and it's also with your wellness so maintaining those levels is something which I have to constantly do all the time because I'm an A type personality apparently I've been told which just means I'm a little bit on the upper, some people are just chill. Like my son is just chill all the time. And yeah, dad, and it's, he's not my biological son, but I call him my son. I've raised him since he was a baby. He's quite chill with stuff. And want to go fishing, son? Oh, yeah. Want to go for a hunt, son? Oh, yeah, sit down, Bigsy. You're not chill, are you, eh? Good boy. You're not chill, are you? Where you go. Don't bite me bloody hand. It's a way of showing love. It's a bloody funny way of showing love. So we're all different, and we all have to become aware of how we are so the message today is check yourself and check how you are making things worse as far as illness goes and that includes uh, mental illness depression 
uh, anxiety, worry, all those things, and also physical problems as well, and spiritual problems if you're a spiritual person. I'm not, but if you are, check on that, because some people have a spiritual unwell-being. I don't really understand how that all works, but uh, I know that people do, because I've talked about it, and um, with other people. But check to make sure you're not making yourself worse than you really are. Uh, very, very hard to stay positive all the time because the human brain is geared to be negative. We're all geared to be negative. It's a survival technique, and I've talked about this before. It's, uh, we're, all, we're all geared negatively. We think we're not, but we are. And I always use the old uh, sort of case scenario where you get woken up at 3.30 in the morning, bang, 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 bang on your door, and suddenly something's, someone's outside, and you hear bang, 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 bang. Now, the first thing I'd probably do is reach under the bed for my, my weapon. Uh, of course, that would be a negative response. You don't go here, bang, 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 go, oh, cool, 3.30 in the morning. It'll be, it could be Clay. I bet Clay's coming around to see me. Oh, I bet he's got some wild pork for me. Happy days. And you go dancing to the door. G'day, mate. Oh, it's not you. You're a burglar. Oh, sorry, mate. No, you're not welcome. You wouldn't do that. You straight away go on high alert. And that's because our brains are negatively geared all the time. We always think the worst case scenario, and that's part of our survival mechanism. And it served us well for years and years as humans that have made it this far, to the point that our population is huge and we're just thriving more and more. And that's part of our survival tool, which is in our brain. Check that you are also not doing the opposite of the placebo to yourself and doing the nocebo. Check that you're not constantly thinking, oh God, I've got this problem, or I've got that, or this is really bad. I actually, this, this tooth, is, uh, really, they, they don't know what they're going to do. It's going to cost a lot of money in the end, but yesterday I was having a bad day. I had sort of sweats, and I could feel the infection rising again, and I thought, I'm not going to buy into this, because my only alternative is to, is to go and see a specialist and get the, not only the tooth taken out, but part of the jaw that's rotten, if it really is. It was not rotten, but it's, it's susceptible to, to getting infection. And I don't want to go down that track because I've spent three grand on trying to save the tooth. And I thought, I'm going to give this a good chance and I'm going to think it's okay. And I went to bed last night, had a bloody good sleep, didn't even take any CBD oil. I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. I've got this. Did some deep breathing and woke up this morning really early, feeling really good, got up. And I've already got like a lot of my jobs done and it's nine o'clock in the morning. I've been up for three hours, four hours now, and I've got a lot of work done. And a lot of that was my mindset. I didn't go to bed and allow myself to fret, oh God, it's going to have to come out, I'm going to lose all that. And this may happen, it may be a reality that I've got to face, but right now, these guys have got out of the fence, it's broken down, doesn't matter. I can still feel that it's not right, and in all honesty, it's probably going to have to deal with it, but thinking the worst case scenario is not going to help me right now, I'm booked to see the dentist uh, follow up uh, in two weeks, so I'll try and hold out that long without having more antibiotics, and hopefully it comes right, it might not, see what happens. So I'm, I'm checking myself. I guess these conversations I have with you guys in these videos, as much as I make them for you to try and give you something to help you through your day, I'm also doing them for myself. I'm having a conversation with me about checking myself as well. And I, I check myself constantly because I don't really know really what I'm doing. I've said this before, I'm just winging it and trying everything that works out and the things that don't work, steering away from those and what does work going towards them and we're all a work in progress we're never just there you don't reach this enlightenment well if maybe you do if you're a buddhist or a christian who's in touch with god or someone who's but i don't i don't really understand what enlightenment is i have moments of enlightenment but i don't really know i have moments like today where i'm very very happy check that out what are you doing keep away from those sheep you little wanker, don't you touch. He knows he's not supposed to go near the sheep, but he just can't help it. And I'll never, ever trust that dog, ever. No. I trust Bixie somehow. Bixie would like to, but he knows he's not supposed to. But I don't trust Pace. Bixie would like, probably like to have a chew. He's had a chew on a deer. Sit down. Yeah, you're a good girl, Pope. You're a good dog. See, this guy's still looking. He knows I'm talking about it, but he can't help himself. They've got that mentality. One word from me, and he'd jump on that. I'd, if I told him to grab it, he would. Anyway, brothers, I hope you're all well, and that uh, life's treating you good. Bit of good news this morning. I see that uh, the government's changed uh, 
the laws now regarding mandating uh, medical staff and also our police. Well, they're looking at that. I don't know if it's gone through yet, but uh, which was never should have happened. Yeah, that's another story for another day. You're a good dog. Yeah, because a lot of medical people have been laid off because they didn't want the vaccine. Fair enough, too. Okay, check yourself. Check your brother. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Go steady. Get him behind pace. Get him behind pace. Get him behind, Big Z. Stay. Good dogs. Get him behind. Get him behind. Get him behind. Get back in behind. Stay. Stay there. Stay. Where you go?